Hello everyone, welcome. So on the agenda for today, I have your middle of the afternoon slump uh, an antidote. <laughs> it's a kind of uh, pick me up, get me out of this slump, uh, short practice so that you can complete the day and feel good. I don't know about you, but for me, if I'm doing work, comes around three o'clock, sitting at the desk for too long or whatever, um, yeah, I can use a practice like this. So I thought I'd share. I've often uh, referred to this practice as uh, sort of like instead of that afternoon coffee, right? Who needs espresso when you have this practice? It's that kind of idea. All right, so we'll get to it. Um, two bricks to begin. And I like to do this first sequence near a wall, but if you don't have easy access to a wall, no problem. You can just have your legs extended. If you happen to have a strap, you can belch your feet. That's also a nice option, but I'll show the wall. That is my preference, my favorite. Okay, so you're gonna lay yourself down in a raised Shavasana over these bricks. And when you position yourself, see if you can do so in such a way that your shoulder blades are actually supported here on this horizontal brick. Okay, so think a little bit more about the, I don't know, maybe two thirds, the bottom two thirds of each shoulder blade and make sure that that's on the flat surface of the brick. Okay, because if the brick is, for example, too low, you're gonna get real tightness here in the diaphragm and we don't want that. And if the brick is too high, right, if it's too high here, you're just not gonna get the opening in the chest that we're after. So take, take your time and find that spot where the shoulder blades are supported on the brick, okay? And then you can also see that the back pelvis is nice and long here. Your head is supported as well and then carefully extend your legs. Now, if you have the wall, what I like to do is press my feet into the wall here, keeping a little bit of bend in the knees and then use that pressure of my feet against the wall to reinvigorate the shape of the chest, right? So I'm getting a bit of a rebound by using my feet into the wall. Okay, once you're there, stay there for a moment, breathe and just allow yourself some time to get accustomed to this shape and the sensations here from the brick. Okay, now once you've done that, from here, you're gonna take your arms, cross the forearms, cup each elbow, and then reach your arms up and over. Okay, now here you're working with the principle of equal and opposite actions. So from your back waist, back waist to your heels, extend in that direction. And then from the corners of your pelvis, through your armpits, right through to your elbow points, extend in the opposite direction. Create length through your side body. Okay, reach into your heels and then pull on your elbows and extend towards those elbows. Then once you've maximized the length here on the side trunk, descend the forearms, right? So understand that there's two distinct actions here in the arms, both lengthening and then also descending. Okay, breathe with each exhalation Absorb the shape of this brick more and more into your chest. Abdomen soft. Press those thighs down, abdomen soft, and then reach equal and opposite. Hold it for another moment. Back waist to heels, extend in one direction. And then as you pull on your elbows, it's almost as if you can lift the rib cage right up off the waist and then descend even more. Breathe. Okay, and then release. Change the crossing of your forearms, and then again repeat. Extend into the elbows, extend into the heels. Equal and opposite. Okay, find those two distinct actions in the arms. Extension, pull on the elbows, reach, 
and then finally add the descension, descend the forearms. Okay, now catch yourself because as you start focusing on the arms and the shoulders, you may find that the legs go a little bit soft. So notice if you're able to keep your attention, your awareness at both ends of the body equally. Okay, back waist to heels, reach away, thighs down, abdomen soft, and then reach into your elbows, create space between each row of ribs, and then again, descend those forearms. Absorb the shape of the brick into your chest, face soft, abdomen soft, and again, breathe. Okay, and then release your arms, and just rest the shoulders for a moment. You can have the arms to the side, Pause here. And now we're gonna take this sequence a little bit further. So from here, you're gonna take your brick and lower it, okay? So now it's a flat brick. And then I'm gonna let my head go. At this point, we're moving in towards a back bend, right? So my head is going back. And you have to really decide, you have to figure this out for yourself. Is this reasonable for you? Okay, there should feel no crunchiness or any sort of negative sensations in the neck, but if it feels okay, then you can go with it. Okay, and then we repeat everything exactly the same. Cross the forearms, cup the elbows, pound your heels into the wall, and equal and opposite, extend away. Reach those elbows away, create space between each row of ribs, and then descend your arms. Press evenly right foot and left foot. Press your thighs down and release any tension in your face, in your abdomen. Steady your breath, notice your breath, be with your breath. And then again, release. Change the crossing of the forearms, exhale, and up and over. Back waist to your heels, reach in one direction, and then extend into those elbows, reach in the opposite direction. Okay, big, broad feet, extend away, whether you're using the wall, a strap, or just tadasan-like legs, independent, extend away. Okay. You can even here do a bit of a pumping action, right? If you feel a little bit of tightness, you can lift, go down, lift, go down. But don't be aggressive about it. Maybe go a couple of times, one, two, three times, and then hold it for a bit. And with your breath, exhale and absorb the brick into your back. And then again, release. Okay, you can give the shoulders a rest here. You can rest your arms like so. Hands just fingers interlaced on the abdomen. Or you can also have them to the side here like this. Okay, take a few breaths here. And then for the final presentation, again, I invite you to choose what is appropriate here for you. So you can repeat the presentation that we just did or you may find that you can remove the brick completely and just let the head come completely down, right? So I'm really on the crown of the head here. Okay, and then again, cross the forearms, repeat the whole cycle, pound those heels, pull on the elbows, extend away, and only once you've maximized the length on the side body here, right elbow reach, left elbow reach, then descend the elbows more. If you happen to touch the floor with your forearms, then work on sliding your forearms even further away. Okay, and once again, can you keep your mind, your awareness, your intelligence at the head side and the leg side, evenly, equally? Okay, don't overdo, don't underdo, but find that full expression. 
All right, and then change the crossing, go for the last round, up and over, extend the back of your legs into your heels, and really it's even more than the back of the legs because notice that I'm saying from the back waist, right from up here, back waist to heels, reach, and then front body ascend through the armpits towards the elbows, lengthen, 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 and then descend. Notice the sensations in your shoulders, the right side, the left side. Notice if there's any differences there. Very often we're not the same, right? So just notice, observe. And if you do find an area that's particularly tight or maybe a little bit of tension, see if a conscious exhalation directed to that side might help you release any a little bit more. All right, good stuff. Okay, then release, bend your knees, pause here, take your hands under your head, use your hands to actually lift your head, okay? Then once your neck muscles are engaged, take your hands to the floor beside your hips. You can even grip the sides of the mat and then press into your elbows and with a lifted chest, bring yourself back up to a seated position. Breathe. In a sense, you want to give yourself um, a moment here to let the breath recalibrate. Inhale, exhale. Good. So now that you have the shape of that brick almost imprinted on your upper back, we're going to take that into some work with Admukha Svanasana. Okay, so what I want you to do first is face the narrow edge of your mat here and take a grip here like this. So, you know, keep your arms about shoulder distance apart and get a good grip here. And then you can tuck the toes under so that they're sort of ready to go. But from here, reach your hips back. Now, it's not Admukha Virasna where you're going way down, but you're also not like this where the buttocks are way high. So reach back, you know, maybe halfway towards your heels. And the first thing I want you to do is just sensitize this side waist area. Okay, so from here, reach your right hip further back than the left. So you're really going off center like this. And then reach back through the left side. And just a couple of times, reach the hip back more and more and more, come back to center. Left one, reach back, reach back, come to center. And see if that just brings a little bit of awareness to this side waist area. Okay? Now all the while, holding the front edge of the mat here, try to pull the rubber out from under you. Okay? Rotate those upper arms from inside out. And now, instead of one hip at a time, reach both hips back and see if you can still create that sensation of length through the side waist. Okay, pull the rubber out from under you, reach your hips up and back. Now maintain this and just lift your knees two inches off the floor. Hips up and back, up and back. Now without letting your armpits come forward, Roll the buttocks up, 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 and unfold yourself into Admukha Svanasana. Now again, remember that brick that you just had in the raised Shavasana, and can you create that sensation in that upper back? Okay, lift the hips up and back, pull the rubber out from under you, pull forward there, and as if the brick was into your back, move the shoulder blades onto the body more and more. Deepen your groins by moving your thighs back more, more, descend your heels. Okay, just let your neck go. Breathe, Admukha Svanasana.
and then release. Okay, lower yourself down and pause. Okay, we'll do it again. And just to um, be really clear here what I mean about the armpits, uh, I'd like to demonstrate just one more time. Okay, so again, I've got a grip here. I'm reaching my hips back like so, like this. And almost like you wanna imagine a line. Sometimes I even put a strap there just to, to find it, you know, to really be able to see it but you can also use your imagination, okay? You're here. When you lift up the knees, a lot of times what happens is people shift forward and then straighten the legs. And so when they do that, you're not getting that same penetration into the upper back. So instead, what I'm asking for is create that shape in the upper back, hips back, shoulder blades onto the body, pull the rubber forward, Knees up, keep it, keep it, keep it, and then unfold the legs, unfold the legs, up and back for your Admogashvanasana. Okay, give it another go, right? If you're watching, then give it another go. If you're in the pose, hold it for a little while longer, and breathe, Admogashvanasana. Okay and then release. Next up is Ustrasen. We're gonna take a supported Ustrasen. And for this variation, I've got a chair, a blanket on top of the chair, and also a brick. If you find that your knees or your shins, your ankles are sensitive, please feel free to put some extra padding on the rubber. You may enjoy that. Um, and also, I'm fairly short. Uh, this setup works really nicely for me, but some people may find they need the chair to be a little bit higher, so don't hesitate to add an extra blanket or, or more even on top there and see how that goes. Okay, so the setup looks like that, and then you're gonna position yourself here like so, where you've got the brick in between your inner heels and you're squeezing there, okay? Like so, like this. Okay, then from here, hold the front chair legs and then lift yourself up and position the back of your neck on the back of the chair here like this. And so you have to figure out the distance from the chair so that you have nice support here because understand we're not doing like a neck bend. The idea here in this variation is for the neck to be very nicely supported. It should feel good. Okay, if it doesn't feel good, try adding another blanket because maybe it's not thick enough. You wanna feel that, that whole sh the whole shape of the neck there really has nice support. Okay, so again, you're holding the legs of the chair, lift yourself up and carefully place the back of your skull here on the back of the chair. And now Ustrasna, grip the brick, press your shins and then Move the mid buttock forward and roll yourself. Roll the front body over towards the head side, right? Your neck is just nicely caught there by the chair frame and move that mid buttock in more. Open those groins. And then slowly release. Carefully sit back down. Pause, okay? In case that was new for you, that's what it looks like. We're gonna go up and down a few times. Let's go for four more rounds up and down. Of course, you can choose your holdings. You can do for a little longer, do for a little less, but this is you know, just a starting place here. All right, so again, grip the brick, squeeze with the inner feet, but at the same time, inner heel, I should say, squeeze, but at the same time, try to get those small toes to touch down. Okay, hold the chair, lift yourself up, position your neck, and then move the mid buttock forward and open the chest. Roll that front body over and the neck may feel like it gets a little longer and you can see further behind you. Hold it there, breathe. And then slowly release, lower down. Pause. 
Okay, when you're in Virasana, just paused here. Ob notice, right? Like sometimes coming out of a back bend, you'll be a little bit extra lordotic. <laughs> Why can't they remember that word? Um, but extra mobile there in the lumbar region, lordosis, okay? So lift the front of the pelvis up, okay? Just give some, some width to the lower back there. All right, and then let's go again. Press down through your feet, press your ankles, your shins, squeeze the block, and then lift, position your neck, and now mid-buttock in, open your chest. Okay, reach those hands down the chair, shoulders back, roll over yourself. And then slowly release, and again, tailbone in, lift the front of the pelvis so the pelvic bowl is quite level, breathe. And then again, take hold, Press down and then slowly lift up, position the head, full Ustrasana shape here. Move the mid buttock in, roll over yourself, hold it. And then release, lower down and again pause. I've sort of lost count, but let's go for one more, just for good measure here, okay? Squeeze the brick with your inner heels, but press down. Feet down, ankles down, shins down. Hold your chair, and then lift up. Position the back of your neck, and now mid-buttock in. Open your chest. That's it, now even for this last one here, you can reach your arms. You can see what does extension do for you. Try Urdhva Hastasana, palm ceiling, facing the ceiling. And then release and slowly lower down. Okay, just to spice it up there a little bit. Okay. Now from here, you can slowly release. You can come out of your Ustrasana. You need to stretch your legs out. You can also come up into Admukha Svanasana just to open the backs of the knees. Okay, we're gonna go next for a twist, Bharadvajasana 1. Now in Bharadvajasana 1, you swing your legs to one side and then you sit. Okay, now for me, when I sit, it's very unlevel and it's quite hard for me to get a nice feeling when I'm this unlevel. Okay, so I prefer to make this a level pose and put something under just one buttock. Okay, but different bodies are different. You may be able to be able to be seated in this position and really it's either level or just about level and then you can just twist. Okay, but if you need a little bit of height, I find a, a thinner bolster, a flattish bolster, is quite nice to work with because it's got the long runway. But you could, if you don't have a bolster, you could put a brick under the buttock and then have a second brick for your hand, um, or blankets as well, right? The, exactly the same thing. But just for ease here, I'll show you how to work with the bolster. You're gonna place the bolster on the right side of your mat and then kneel next to it and swing your legs to the left. And once the legs go to the left here, you place your left foot into the arch of your right foot and then sit back and you sit back so that your right buttock, only the right buttock there, is on the bolster, okay? These feet here are outside your hip. Okay, you can take your hands and just broaden the back of your right thigh there, turn it in, the front of the thigh in, and broaden the back thigh. Legs are going to the left, inhale, lift, exhale, turn yourself to the right. So this is why it's nice to have this runway here because you can take your arm and have it touching the bolster as well. 
If you didn't have something for your back arm, maybe only a blanket under your buttock, you would be leaning to get to the floor, right? So it's slightly problematic. Okay, so then lift and turn. Turn yourself. Turn your abdomen, turn your ribs, and roll that right shoulder way back. Okay, with your left hand, just pull yourself around. Use your left foot here to push into your right arch, anchor your left hip, and again, turn yourself to the right. Lift your chin slightly, and ever so slightly look over your right shoulder. Okay, Barad Vajasna one, just this first stage. Good come back to the center, pause here. I always like to observe between sides when you're doing the twists because that twisting action will very often sensitize those different areas of the back and the difference between the side that you've just twisted towards versus the side that you haven't, you may, it may bring things to the surface. You might really feel the, the distinctions there. Okay, now from here you can lean forward and then you're gonna swing your legs to the other side. You may need to adjust your prop slightly or the position of your legs slightly. And then again, sit back. Remember, it's only the left buttock that's gonna be on the bolster. And once you've landed here, you can just try to level yourself out a little more by broadening the back of the left thigh, rolling the front thigh in. Look over to your feet, see that they are indeed outside your hip, and then press your right foot into your left arch to anchor that left hip down, down. Okay, now inhale, lift, exhale, turn to the left. Your right hand comes across, just get a grip. The left hand comes behind you, lift and turn. Turn the abdomen, turn the ribs, open here and roll that left shoulder back okay chin up slightly and revolve okay don't overdo it with the neck or in the head there turning but just a little bit okay check back in with the foundation okay notice if that uh, right hip is lifting use the foot into the arch anchor that hip and then out from that revolve yourself with each exhalation, see, can you twist a little more? Now just a couple more breaths here. And notice too that you're not falling into that back arm. Okay, push off with the back arm and move the spine into the body even more. Good, all right, and then release and undo yourself here. Okay, to end your practice, we're gonna take um, a seated Shavasana, something similar to a seated Shavasana. Okay, so also referred to as Yoga Mudrasana, but you're gonna take a chair, sit cross-legged, and then see if you can create a setup like this where the whole front body can be supported, and then you come forward. Okay, so lower the chin towards your chest a little bit. The head is coming forward like so. And then have your arms resting on the chair. And the elbows are bent. The upper back is broad here. And you also have the diaphragm touching the bolster, the low abdomen supported. It's a very um, calming and settling way to just bring this practice to a close. Okay, take a few breaths, inhale, exhale. Notice where the breath starts, where it goes and see if you can start to feel how the breath spreads and maybe is attracted a little bit more towards the back body and that area in which we've been focused on. Okay, 
Okay, you can stay in this position for as long as you'd like, for as long as your schedule permits. But I hope that you'll find just a nice sense of closure and um, composure when you come out of this asana. Okay, and I hope that you're ready to go ahead with whatever else is on your agenda for today. Okay, thank you very much for today. I look forward to practicing with you again next time. Mm -hmm.